Hey, Philly. We need 100 people to fill out our quick listener survey. It's easy and fun and really about making our show even better and more useful for you. It's all multiple choice and it won't take more than five minutes. I know because I timed it. <laughs> Plus, anyone who takes the survey will be eligible to win a $250 Visa gift card. Visit citycast.fm slash survey. Again, that's citycast.fm slash survey. Okay, here's the show. Today on CityCast Philly, Philly Beer Week is happening and many of the top craft brewers in the country are right here in Pennsylvania. I'm speaking with CityCast Pittsburgh host Megan Harris about the best beers in the Commonwealth. It's Tuesday, June 6th. I'm Trina Nuri, and here's what Philly's talking about. Hey, Megan. Hey, Trina. So, Megan, are you a big beer drinker? I love it in the right setting, you know, like right, a good yeah. happy hour or a patio with friends. Yeah, it depends on the activity for me, too. I tend to drink <laughs> beer in a social setting like sports. Yeah, um, yeah. But I, I will have to say I'm more of a cocktail girl. So <laughs> <laughs> I like wine, too. So, yeah, I'm with yes, you. <laughs> wine is definitely good. And, you know, I, I just want to put the disclaimer out there. You know, so obviously we are not, I am not a beer expert, nope. but the Brewers Association is. So you can check out their beer style guide for a really wide range of types of beers. And uh, yeah, today we're just, we're just trying stuff out. We're casual drinkers. Yeah, we yeah. like stuff. We like to try stuff. We <laughs> mm -hmm. don't necessarily need to down every beer we're about to try, although we got a lot. That would be dangerous if we did. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> now, I got to ask you this. Does beer taste better in a can or in one of those ice cold glasses or maybe even a bottle? I think it depends on the beer and the situation. Like there are right. a couple of bars that I love it straight out like of the tap and draft. Okay. But there are some like if I'm at like a party or a patio or sitting around a fire, I want it in a koozie. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. What's a koozie? I never heard that term. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of those like foam things that you put around the glass bottle or the oh, can that keeps okay. it cold. Got it. <laughs> you learn something new every day. Yeah, okay, for so you. for this episode, we're going to do sort of a virtual statewide PA beer crawl. Yes, and we're going to give you some recommendations for local breweries to check out in each of our cities. That's right. So we're going to also grade these beers on their taste, design of the can, and anything else that seems important. <laughs> so we're going to give them between a one and five keystone, right? I love Since, that. Yeah. All credit to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, one for not so good, five for, wow, that's a great beer. Perfect. Okay. So I am grabbing the Summer Haze from Dock Street. Um, this is a pale ale style beer and Dock Street uh, first opened back in 1985 and they claim to be Philly's first craft brewery and they used to be in West Philly, but now they have a location on Washington Avenue. All right, this is hard because I got these nails on. Oh, are your nails intact? Did you make it? Yeah, I made it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I don't have to go to the nail salon. All right. So I'm going similar vibes. I'm kicking things off with a blonde ale, um, but she's a little special. It's from Oryx Brewing in Emsworth, which is just north of Pittsburgh city limits. They're completely gluten-free, and this one Ooh. is brewed with millet and quinoa. Okay, that's Fun interesting. Fact. I know, right? <laughs> Fun fact, or maybe a legend, um, an auric was like a bull, and they got apparently hunted out of extinction because people liked drinking barley and wheat beer out of their horns. So the folks who make this are really digging deep here. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to pour into a little cup. I'm not doing any pouring. We're just going straight out of the Oh, can. you're going straight. Okay. Cheers, Trine. Cheers. Um, <laughs> I'm pleasantly surprised. 
Okay. If that's a good face you're making. Yeah, I know. It's hard to distinguish, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it does not taste like any different than any other blonde ale. Like it's really smooth. It has kind of a weedy flavor. I think they did a great job. Okay. I'm not sure if I'm uh, totally filling Doc Streets. Um, maybe this is not my particular style. It's It's got this like aftertaste. Um, mm, okay. That I don't usually like. So it's got like a beery aftertaste, but um, <laughs> I don't like the beer flavor in the beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I I usually like citrusy types of beer, okay. but I will give them credit for this really dope can that they have. They have the art museum steps, bunch of people outside enjoying the summer because it's the summer haze. Um, Mm. I will give this a three. It's not bad. It's all right. All right. All right. Yeah. I think my favorite thing about this one is that it is four and a half percent ABV, which is a nice light beer for yeah. a summer day. Nice. Uh, I'm going to go four. I'm going to go four keystones on this. Oh, that's great. So where did you pick up your beer from? I got my beer from a spot called Rye Brew. And the funny thing is Rye Brew is actually located on Girard Avenue in the city, but it's in a neighborhood called Brewery Town. So as you can imagine, this particular neighborhood back in the day was known for beer making. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I've heard of Brewery Town. I didn't know if it actually had anything to do with history, but it's Philly. So of course it does. <laughs> um, I got mine from a place called House of a Thousand Beers. <laughs> They're a funky little local chain, um, but Pittsburgh's got a fun culture of bottle shops yeah. all over the city. Is it similar there? Yeah, same here. There's a lot of different places. Um, and yeah, it was really fun going to Rye because I just like walked in. I was like, hey, I need to make a six pack for work. <laughs> but I was like, oh, OK. Um, and fun job. just totally helped me out. They had labels on the fridge so it was very easy to find the type of style of beer you're looking for so highly recommend mine was a little more diy but that's okay <laughs> let's talk about some of our local craft breweries that ha we have here yeah. in pennsylvania um i'm actually going to consult my handy little brewery guide it's the second edition so in pittsburgh we have about 40 breweries right now um this map i'm holding actually breaks them into fun trails that you can do along the rivers and into a few neighborhoods some of my favorites that I'm actually not sampling today but are in this book are Grist House, and it has this, what they call the Shaman series. They're all sours. They're very strongly flavored. They're extremely fruity. They're almost like a cocktail. I think you'd like it. Okay, so um, maybe I should have picked up some sours. I had no idea. <laughs> um, some sours. Some of them some, are still very okay. beery. Uh, East End Brewing, um, they have a neighborhood series here in Pittsburgh, so we have 90 neighborhoods, and over several years, they're doing a beer release for each one. It's so cool. Oh, that's amazing. And then um, just two more, Allegheny City Brewing on the north side and Trace Brewing in Bloomfield. They're both doing such cool things. Gotcha. You know, I forgot to mention um, in the IPA category, I got a Victory Juicy Monkey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, since um, you're going IPA, I guess I will too. I've got a General Braddock from Brew Gentleman in Braddock, Pennsylvania. Nice. Oh, it smells good. Mm. Y'all, it didn't open. Look. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know what to do about this. I don't know. Because if you bend it back, it might. Uh, this is a first time experience. Fall off. But wait, there's tricks. I've seen people uh, open cans on like the side. I don't know if I have the dexterity for this. <laughs> I'm going to cut myself. <laughs> Okay, you you experience your beer. Stand by. Okay, let me let me try uh, this uh, victory juicy monkey. Mmm, <laughs> this is strong. Um, this has a nine point five percent. Whoa. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Are you well? <laughs> um, I'm okay. Uh, <laughs> and of course, I got the uh, because it was the only size at the store. It's a nine nineteen point two fluid ounce can. So this one will have you. It's probably enough just for one. Um, wow, that's really strong. 
I'm giving that um what's our top score? <laughs> five keystones. Yeah, I like I'm that you're already that five forgetting. Keystones. <laughs> okay. We'll have to come back to mine later on. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Uh let's see. Uh I think I want to take a hard left turn. Um I have a Hawaiian Punch IPA. Um, it's called Whole Punch from Hitchhiker Brewing in a little suburb of Pittsburgh called Mount Lebanon. Um, it's got milk sugar, tropical fruit, and vanilla. Wow, that almost sounds like a chai tea. We shall see. Hey, this one opened. Nice. Oh, even just the scent of that could bowl you over. That is smooth. Mm. You said it has milk in it? Milk sugar, yeah. Like to help the fermentation, I assume. Interesting. Maybe that's what's making it smooth, too. This is aggressive. <laughs> I don't know if I like it. Yeah. Like I, I mean, like the tropical notes. Yeah. But it almost has, this is not accurate, but it almost has like, you know how like coconut milk will sort of like coat everything if it's mm -hmm. in it? Mm -hmm. It kind of reminds me of that. Okay. Maybe IPAs are aggressive. <laughs> I think I like a said. classic IPA a little bit better. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Very interesting. I'm getting a collection over here. <laughs> so in the Philly region, you know, we have tons of breweries in the city, outside in the five county area. We have Victory, Yards, Iron Hill, which Iron Hill probably might be one of my favorites now that I think about it. They have fresh stuff. They even have fresh root beer that they make on the premises. Um, there's a place, literally, it's called the Philadelphia Brewing Company. There's Attic, Two Locals, which is a Black-owned beer company. Uh, Love City, Dock Street, which I mentioned earlier. Evil Genius, Tired Hands, Free Will, Punch Buggy, and Crime and Punishment. I really love e Evil Genius, um, another plus one for them. I really had to stop myself from grabbing some last night when getting these. <laughs> okay, so let's go into a wheat beer. For this, I have the Voluptuous Fuzz from 2SB Brewing, which is actually in Aston, PA, which is in Delaware County. Uh, mm -hmm. They rep the suburbs. Um, for example, their lager is also called the Delco lager. But yeah, I'm going to try this voluptuous fuzz. And I need to see cute. this can too. Yeah, yeah, look at it. It's like, it's got a little man holding I like a the peach. color palette. Yeah, Me that's too. good. It's a peach color, like a teal blue. It's giving early 90s in a good way. Yeah. And I have a Fatheads Brewing Goggle Fogger. Um, it's a German style Hefeweizen, so right with right there with you on the wheat beer. Nice. One thing I do appreciate about uh, beer culture is are all these funny names that they come up with. <laughs> they do a very good job. Yeah, Fatheads has been here in Pittsburgh, gosh, for ages now. Um, they're really one of the OGs, and they were also one of the first ones to like start experimenting. I think with like especially fruity flavors. Um, they've got a bumbleberry, which is a blueberry beer that has been popular the whole time I've lived here. People just love it. Nice. Oh, I like this. This tastes like a grill in not a good way. <laughs> <laughs> so don't bring it to the barbecues, the cookouts. Hmm. Maybe I need, I mean, I'm looking at the, the can art here. Maybe I need like a full day out in the sun or a day on the ski slopes to properly appreciate it. Yeah, this is this is Memorial Day in a can, but I, I don't dig it. Mm. Um, voluptuous, uh, it tastes a little seltzery. Okay. I assumed it would be a little bit more peachy, but that's not the case. But this is light. It's 4.8%, um, and I would actually go for this on a hot summer day so that you don't feel heavy. Yeah. So what are you thinking rating-wise? Rating? I'll give this I'll give this a four. I like that. I'm, I'm going to go a one keystone on this one, which could just mm. be down to personal taste. It's right. smoky. If you love a smoky beverage, this could be for you.
Megan, what's Pittsburgh's relationship to beer? You know, for a long time, I think the Pittsburgh Brewing Company dominated the scene here in Pittsburgh. They make a lot of classics. A lot of people have seen like Icy Light or Iron City Beer, Iron City, if you're from here. Um, And it's still successful. They actually just opened a brand new state-of-the-art facility on the Allegheny River this year. Um, And they even partnered with Turner's Iced Tea, which is a local delicacy to make an icy beer or iced tea beer. I've never heard exactly how you're supposed to pronounce this thing, but it's been the talk of the town this summer. But there's been this craft brewing boom over the last 20 years. Um, Penn Brewery opened in Troy Hill in 1989. Church Brew Works opened in Lawrenceville in 1996. And then when East End Brewing, they're the ones that do that neighborhood series, opened in Larimer in 2004. That was really kind of, I think, the beginning. Like, I remember getting their beer at farmer's markets and trying it um, whenever I first moved here. And so much has changed since then. Um, I don't know if you remember this. Do you remember the bag of chips law that was on the books here in Pennsylvania for the longest time? Remind us what that is. Um, It meant that brewers could sell pints for consumption on site as long as the space had at least 10 seats and snacks like the proverbial bag of chips. Oh, I have heard of that. Yeah, yeah. There were a bunch of weird rules with it, um, but it made it a lot easier for breweries all over the state to become like proper hangout spots like we know them today. So I think that's kind of what gets Pittsburgh, at least, to our current number of around 40 breweries in and very close to the city proper. Gotcha. Well, here in Philly, you know, we're an old city, so the history of (laughs) beer is really, really long. A lot of the first breweries were along the waterfront, and that's according to Hidden City. There's even a, like I said before, there's even a neighborhood called Brewery Town that takes the name of a lot of the beer makers that used to be here as well. Um, As of February, there's 32 breweries all over the city, and that's up from 17 uh, back in 2017. But that doesn't count like tap rooms and stuff like that. Yeah, that sounds Um, right. Similar to Pittsburgh. Okay. And according to Visit Philly, Philly has more than 100 craft breweries spread out nearly 150 locations in the five county region. So Philly's beer scene is definitely growing. One thing I also uh, know, this is like a maybe like a cultural thing. A lot of times uh, after like big races, Mm -hmm. like the Broad Street Run or the Philadelphia Marathon, a lot of places, a lot of restaurants and uh, breweries will host the runners for for free beer. Oh, I don't know that we give away free beer. I love that policy, though. (laughs) But they're definitely always popping after the big stuff. Um, We even have an event. We just had one. There's more coming in the summer called Open Streets, where they shut down everything to car traffic. So it's only pedestrians or people on bicycles, scooters, whatever. And the breweries always do amazing business during those days. Okay, I am ready to try a lager. And I have one from a place called Love City. Um, This is located in the Callow Hill neighborhood in Philly. Uh, They have a tap room and a really nice beer garden up there with food trucks that you can go visit and sample their beer. That sounds fun. Yeah. I'm going similar style, um, an Irish red. This is from North Country Brewing up in Slippery Rock. It's perfect to snag on your way to or from a lake day at Moraine State Park just north of Pittsburgh. Smells nice. Oh. So the can says crisp, golden, easy. And that's exactly what it is. And I like this. I'll give this four keystones. Yeah. Yeah, this is very malty. Like it's got a very distinct bready flavor that I like. I think a couple of these would feel like a proper meal. (laughs) I'm going to go... Three and a half to four. Three and a half to four keystones. Yeah. It's so interesting, the variety and styles of beer. Totally. 
I would love to hear if you have a favorite spot to find good beer in the city. You know, there's a little shop in the south side here that I love called Carson Street Deli. They always have new stuff on tap. They do sampling during happy hours and their coolers are always full of local releases. So you can find like really fun surprises when you pick up like a mixed six pack. You know what I mean? Um, And they're always from Pittsburgh or Philly or our surrounding states. I just love them. What about you? Nice. Um, I like that you said surprises, too. So I actually enjoy going to Chickie and Pete's, which is a local sports bar chain Mm -hmm. during like the sports playoffs or when we're like really, really, you know, in the thick of the of the seasons. You've Um, you've had a lot of good runs of those lately. (laughs) (laughs) And I like to strike up a conversation with the bartender and ask them for their recommendations. And so they're like, hey, have you tried this? Have you tried that? I'm like, usually I'm like, no, 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 no. Um, and so that's how I found my, my, I guess, love for the citrus stuff. So uh, shout out to the bartenders there. Then there's this really, really dope spot. It's called Drury Beer Garden. I hope I'm saying that right. Drury Beer Drury Garden. Drury Beer Garden. I can't say yeah. it now either. <laughs> Drury. Um, Drury. It's located on 13th and Samson. It's a spot where they have the beer in the back. So they have beers on tap. But then if you're actually like into a cocktail and a dance party, that's in the front with the live DJ. So that's pretty cool. Then there's this place all the way in Germantown called Attic. And they claim to be the neighborhood's first craft brewery in over 100 years. And their space is really cool. They have they have beer, but they also do a lot of like live music events as well. So nice. You're putting me to shame. I guess I'll shout out one more. Uh, the Pittsburgh <laughs> Independent, probably. It's this little bar over in Squirrel Hill. Um, they have also have like amazing cocktails and food, too. Uh, but they always have fun stuff on tap. Nice. All right. When I was down at Rye, I got really excited when the guy passed me this particular can. It's called Slugger by Sly Fox. This is a Pilsner. And if you're caught up on my social media, you'll see that it's in this really cool retro Phillies baseball theme can. I just love this color combination. It's called Slugger. I, I hope this is what this one's good. I hope it's good. She's pretty. I'll give her that. Yes. Uh, my last two are wildly different. They have a bunch of locations now, but that was their OG. Um, It's a Russian Imperial Stout. So I'll crack that. And then I have a handy dandy can opener for the one that didn't open before. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to try that IPA as well. I've got a stout too um, in my box. This one is also from Love City. So this one, um, similar to the other Love City, this one says that it's a rich, dark, smooth beer. So I'm going to open the slugger first. She's pretty. I'll give her that. Uh, My last two are wildly different. So I've got a Russian Imperial Stout. I think it's a seasonal from Voodoo Brewing and Homestead. They've got a bunch of locations now, but that was their OG spot. So I'll crack this. And then I've got a handy dandy can opener for the beer that didn't open before. So I'm going to try it. I'm going to try that IPA. That's cool. Oh, this is entirely weather inappropriate, but it's delicious. And that one is the the Russian Imperial. Uh, the Slugger, it definitely, as you can imagine, would be so awesome on a hot day at Citizens Bank Park. You're watching the Phillies beat the Pittsburgh Pirates. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to go there. <laughs> I will give the Slugger five keystones. I'm going to give... I think he gets, I think, I think we're going to go four keystones. I think in the middle of winter, if you ask me, it would be four and a half, five. And Sly Fox, um, I should mention, is actually brewed in Pottstown. Okay. I might not be open in this brew gentleman beer. I still can't do it. I got a, um, a beer open. That's smart. Well, I'm trying, but it's not well suited for this task. Okay, there we go. All right, the stout. Ooh. Oh, it smells like chocolatey. 
Oh, I think I like this. I don't think I've ever had a, a stout before. Down for the dessert beers. We're learning something about you. Mm, hold up now. <laughs> no, this is like a coffee. And I like this. I like Good. this. Because I also, I love like dark, um, like medium to dark roast coffees. And this is definitely, this tastes like a coffee. Hitting the spot. Whoa, that's good. <laughs> I think this is the first one I've seen you nearly drain. <laughs> out of yeah, a, a I, small I, pour I, out of a plastic cup. And she's not drinking yes, the whole yes, beer. Let, come on, let, yeah. <laughs> Don't give me all. <laughs> I wouldn't blow you um, up like that. Okay, so my top choices definitely now are the Victory Juicy Monkey and Love City's Sylvie. Syl How do you say this? I I'll think it's a Sylvie. Hit. Yeah. Sylvie. And the Love City's Sylvie Stout. Those are my top. Bing, bang, bing, bing, bing. My top picks. So I've still only tried five out of my six, but I think I'm going to go with Hitchhiker's Hole Punch, that Hawaiian Punch IPA, mm. um, and the Oryx, the gluten-free beer, the Blondale. Digging both of these. Love it. All right, that's CityCast Pittsburgh host, Megan Harris. Megan, it was so great to drink with you today. You Cheers. too. Thank you. For more info about Philly Beer Week, check out the link in our show notes. And here's what else Philly's talking about. June is Gun Violence Awareness Month. And the city is hosting several initiatives and community events to bring awareness to this issue and honor victims and survivors. The 10th annual Brother Stroll for the Health of Black Men and Boys is happening this Saturday, June 10th, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Art Museum Steps. And Comcast is giving out $5,000 to small business owners in Philly. According to Philly Voice, Comcast Rise grants are awarded to 100 recipients. Winners will also get a 30-second TV commercial, consultations, as well as new computer equipment, internet, and cybersecurity for a year. To see if your business is eligible, go to ComcastRise.com. The deadline is June 30th. Good luck. That's all for today here on CityCast Philly. If you enjoyed this episode about Pennsylvania beer, tell a friend who also loves beer. Rate the show, leave us a review, and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to sign up for our morning newsletter too. It's called Hey Philly. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Bye. Oh my gosh, he cut the entire, he cut the entire top <gasps> off. Oh my gosh. <laughs> there's there's a quest to get this damn beer open through the whole episode. <laughs> okay, we're doing it. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's good.